Thank you very much. There was a time where the Mediterranean was called to become a lake of peace. Fernand Brodel used to talk about a lake of exchanges. This is not the case today. Uh, it's a lake of fears and tears. The term Mare Nostrum, uh, originally used by the Romans, has today a new usage. Following the 2013 Lampedusa migrant track, <coughs> Italy decided to strengthen the national system for patrolling the Mediterranean, authorizing Operation Mare Nostrum, a military and humanitarian effort to rescue migrants, to rescue migrants, and arrest traffickers. The European Union is one of the richest and most peaceful regions of the world. Many Europeans would like to set the standard for compassion and affirm their duty to grant safe haven to those who flee or fear persecution. Yet, the recent dramatic events in some countries and the other very, very disturbing incidents, such as the ones in Germany, in Cologne, show how difficult it is to be stubbornly committed to one's values and ideals. For years, Libya has been both a destination and a transit country for refugees and migrants fleeing poverty, conflict, or persecution in sub-Saharan Africa and the Arab world. Many came to Libya hoping to reach Europe, but the rise of low lawlessness and the threat posed by radical armed groups <coughs> excuse me, has multiplied the risks they face with no legal avenues to escape and seek safety, they are forced to place their lives in the hands of smugglers who extort and abuse them. In Syria, and in addition to the 10 million internally displaced, there are 4 million refugees registered with the UNHCR. 2 million in Turkey, 1.1 million in Lebanon, though the numbers are probably higher, 650,000 in Jordan, although the numbers are probably higher, and the rest in Iraq and Egypt. There is an inevitable spillover effect beyond the immediate neighbors. Most of those who leave Syria cannot be assimilated to conventional economic migrants. They are refugees who look towards qualifying for asylum. Whether they qualify or not is another story. The majority of those estimated million refugees who reached Europe, Germany in particular, are Syrians. 800,000 came by sea from Turkey to Greece and 150,000 from Libya to Italy. 3,692 perished in this perilous journey. This exodus highlights first and foremost the failure of the international community, not just to Western nations, but Arab nations as well. In view of the limited resources and capacities of countries like Jordan and Lebanon in dealing with, with the humanitarian needs of refugees, we've received international assistance. In 2015, the assistance received did not exceed 35% of what was requested. Lebanon has uh, hosted, as I said, 1.1 million registered Syrian refugees, which is more than 25% of its population. To try to work the arithmetics, uh, if you want to compare Lebanon 
as it's affected by the refugee crisis with any other country, more than 25% of its population. The percentage of Syrian refugees that uh, live as households below poverty line, that is the poverty line of 3.84 US dollars per person per day, the percentage is around 70%. 70 percent. 400,000 school-aged children from 5 to 16, out of 400,000, only 30,000 are enrolled in schools, less than 10 percent, from a situation in which nearly all Syrians enjoyed basic literacy, that was before 2011, only 25% of refugee children in Lebanon can read and write, can read and write. To be sure, Lebanon, fragile country as it is, uh, has is its shortcomings and failures. Lebanese hospitality is far from sufficient. In the context of a socio-economic crisis, while we are praised for our hospitality, not enough international aid is extended to alleviate the burden imposed by the massive influx of deprived refugees. The economic burden it was aggravated further when the funds for refugee support has, had fallen short. To mention one, the World Food Program had to cut food ratios for Syrian refugees in half. It's now $13.5 per person per month. But the burden is not economic only. The controversy about having refugee camps in Lebanon uh, shed light on the potential security threat. Although it, this threat is overstated by a number of political actors in our fragile country. Having opted against camps, the previous Lebanese government did not provide shelter for the Syrian refugees, except in a few cases. The responsibility fell largely on host communities. Some are very poor and on NGOs. Expressions of solidarity, however, did not endure. <coughs> Fears and misperceptions were exacerbated by the deterioration of the conditions of host communities themselves. Be that as it may, the political failure lies primarily in the inability of the international community to address the causes at the root of the refugee problem. Many countries seem to be more preoccupied in containing the refugee movement. That's the case of Lebanon. I'm not talking about European countries only. Preoccupied in containing the refugee movement at the expense of refugee protection. There is a manifest deficit in dealing with conditions that trigger population displacement so that people are not obliged to move, bearing in mind, however, that prevention does not mean preventing people from moving. I'm quoting here Antonio Gutierrez. In Libya, the international community intervened militarily in 2011, invoking the responsibility to protect the civilian population. The NATO countries, military operations, toppled Gaddafi re regime, but were soon succeeded in their Libya policy by what Westerners would like to call a light footprint. A light footprint. Such a policy contributed, even if passively, to Libya's descent into violence and chaos. In Syria, not only the responsibility to protect the civilian population 
was not upheld, upheld in any form but a genuine political solution that puts an end to the war was not reached. And the means towards, towards it, towards reaching a political solution, remain high, highly deficient. Good luck for those who are meeting on the 25th and who believe that the meeting on the 25th is going to bring a solution. Good luck. In neighboring countries, Turkey in particular, the daunting question that dominates the lives of Syrians is to stay in Turkey or to embark on the perilous sea journey to, to, to Europe. This question has become urgent in the wake of a recent agreement between Turkey and the European Union that means to limit the number of refugees sailing to Europe. Around three billion dollars aid to Turkey would contribute towards improving the lives of Syrians so that they will not embark on a dangerous journey. For its part, Lebanon, nor Jordan for that matter, had benefited from a comparable aid package. Fearing that most refugees back to Lebanon will cross the borders and add to the very large number that we have, our government imposed drastic restrictions on Syrians entering Lebanon, worse, on Syrians traveling through Beirut International Airport. Last week, 400 Syrians trying to fly to Turkey were stopped and forced to return to Damascus instead. Illustrating thus, that options are narrowing for those who are fleeing the war in Syria. Options are indeed narrowing for those who are trying to flee the war in Syria. The Syrian passengers were turned back because of a new Turkish regulation, maybe that's the result of the aid package, God knows, require Syrians to have visas. In the eyes of Human Rights Watch, the, these deportations, I mean the Lebanese deportations, violate the international norm of refraining from sending refugees back to their countries when their lives are in danger. But Lebanon says they are in conformity with the regulations <coughs> issued by the Lebanese government with the purpose of not allowing additional Syrian refugees into our country. Under the residency regulations, Syrian refugees are sorted in two categories. Those registered with UNHCR, 1.1 million, and those who have to find a Lebanese sponsor to remain legally in the country. And many of us individual Lebanese uh, offer to be sponsors of Syrians staying in Lebanon. Many Syrians of both categories are having serious difficulties getting their costly residence permits renewed. In a recent report, Human Rights Watch stated that residency regulations are making life impossible for a large number of refugees and pushing them underground. Now the last thing Lebanon, or any other country for that matter, but Lebanon in particular, needs is a large undocumented community living at the margins of society at a heightened risk of abuse. Lebanon, unfortunately, is not a signatory to the 1951 Refugee Convention or its 1967 protocol. Consequently, it doesn't assign refugee status to individuals who would otherwise qualify for it under international law. All procedures for entering and remaining in the country are based on local laws and regulations. However, Lebanon is bound by the customary international principle of no refoulement, which prohibits returning people to places where they risk being persecuted, tortured, or exposed to inhuman treatment or punishment. Having said this, and I conclude, the respect of such principle and calling for a minimum standard for treating refugees 
will not yet yield significant res results if it is preached only. More support to Lebanon, as in the case of Turkey, is needed to enable the country to cope better with the massive presence of refugees expected to last a good number of years. UN statisticians, second category that uh, the Archbishop had mentioned, the statisticians tell us that on average a refugee would spend 15 years in, in a country uh, before final resettlement or return to, to their home country. Uh, we fear that more time will pass before a genuine process, political process, in seeking a solution will take place. It will be some time before we have a durable ceasefire in Syria. United Nations Security Council Resolution 2254 that we have all uh, uploaded does not call for an immediate ceasefire, which is the basic beginning of a, new, uh, of a political process. So we don't have a ceasefire. The creation of a safe haven in Syria that will limit the refugee movement <coughs> towards neighboring countries or allowing some of them to return is not even on the negotiations table. The question is how long will the Syrians have to wait before even a more minimal request, that is to have humanitarian access, is secured to stop the war crimes, including that of starving the civilian population, as we saw recently in the city of Madaya and other Syrian cities. Thank you.